Hi, I'm Aymud. Welcome back to one of my auto repair videos. In this video, I'm going to show you how to remove and replace the wheel knuckle for a Honda Insight 2010. First off, we're going to take off this center big bolt right here. And in order to do that, you can see that it's actually hammered in on the side in order for it to not turn. In order to make that round again, we're going to wedge a screwdriver right in this notch. And then we're going to hit it with a hammer or pretty much any heavy tool and then make it round. And then we're going to use a power tool or you can do it manually and then I'm going to unscrew it. After that, let me demonstrate on this new part here. There are four bolts in total that we have to take out. There's two bolts up here, which shouldn't be too hard. Then at the bottom here, there's a bolt in order to take out that bolt, we're going to need to release a pin, which we'll show you later. Oh, I guess we can show you now. And once we have that pin out, it, we still need to knock it loose. So we're going to put some PV blaster and leave it overnight. Oh, I'll just put it now. Okay. And then we're going to leave it overnight. And then lastly, there is a bolt on the right side, right here. All right, so we're back, it's the next day, and we're gonna start out with taking out the central bolt right here. The only way to do this right now is to use a impact driver. But if you wanna take it out manually, you have to take it out before you take out the brakes because in order to take it out manually, you need someone to step on the brakes while you're taking it out. So just keep that in mind. But first off, what we're gonna do is we're gonna make this round again so I can take it out. All right, so keep in mind that the axle nut, which is what it's called, is around 181 foot pounds so that's why we're using the impact driver so take a 32 millimeter socket i'm gonna use this one actually and then we're gonna set this to three because it is 181 uh, foot pounds and then bombs away hopefully that's my mouth okay drive safe hopefully we've rounded it out enough so that it can be taken out It took us a while to get that bolt out. And let me just tell you, we tried everything. We tried WD-40, we tried using a breaker bar. A breaker bar is not gonna work as well, especially when we already took the brakes off. And then, like, after I did that, we switched batteries, and then uh, I put it back on. And I just kept, like, going to town on it. And then, like, cause I was just so angry at this, stupid bolt that wouldn't come out and uh you know when it came out i felt like really victorious and then my dad was like what are you doing and i was like yeah yeah well we got it out but anyway we're gonna move on to the next step so i said that the next step was going to be these two bolts that connected to a strut and then after that we're going to deal with the tie rod so let's get the these two bolts out of the way first and those are pretty easy they're just number 19s with the breaker bar oh there it is We're gonna have an extension because it's a bit tricky to get to. I felt really, really accomplished when I got that bolt out though. Okay. And then this one. After we take this out, we're gonna leave the bolts in just so that you can have it sort of hanging on the bolts, but we should still take them out. Okay, so now we're gonna take it out using the impact driver. I mean, you don't have to, but we're gonna mitigate, we're gonna expedite it. Speed one. Speed two. Okay. There we go. Now we got the bolts out, I mean the, the nuts out. Alright, so now we're going to deal with the tie rod. So in order to take out the tie rod, we have to take out this pin right here. So this pin, when it's new, it looks like this. We actually have a ton of spears. It's 
So this is what they look like new. So basically what I want to do is they go into a slot and then they get bent out sort of like this. So in order to take that out, we're going to take pliers and then we're going to straighten them out. Now, when you try to take it out and it breaks, then if it breaks on the outside, there's no, it's not really a worry, but if it breaks on the inside, you're gonna to have to drill it out. In our case, we don't wanna break it because we don't have a drill that's small enough to uh, take that out because most of them are broken. I mean, a drill bit, but it should hopefully be relatively easy. And if we, even if we do break it, we can still replace it. All right, so we're gonna use a hammer to knock it out from this side, and then we're going to try to pull it out from the other side using a gripper. But, I mean, even if we try it this way, I'm pretty sure it's just gonna get bent. All right, so a car this long, 170,000 miles, it doesn't matter. We ended up breaking it because it's rusted already. But eventually, we got to a point where breaking it actually did help because if we break it, we're able to hit it without it redistributing the force. So that means we are now able to force it back enough so that we can pull it out. I don't want to bend this part out because if I do, that's going to be troublesome. Oh, <sighs> I'm angry at this piece now, but this is what it looks like. Fortunately, we can replace those. Let me see what this one is looks like. Yeah, eh, close, close enough. So we got the clip out. Yeah, clip out. So you might be thinking, what's the purpose of that of that pin? Now, or clip. Now the reason that that pin is there is in order to secure this castle nut right here. All right, so I think it back. I was looking at it and I was like, that doesn't look like a castle. And it turns out it's not, it's not a castle nut. This is what a castle nut looks like. It has these little things in down here that makes it look like a rook and chess. This one does not have any of those ridges. So I'm gonna use a breaker bar in order to take it out. Ready, tidy, lucky, lucky. So that means if I wanna loosen it like this, I have to flip the direction. That means I pull it towards me. <sighs> there we go. Always gotta use a bit of logic when you're loosening things. We're gonna take it out with the impact driver in order to save some time. All right, so I said I'd save a little time with the impact driver, but it turns out the vibration of taking out this axle nut, really it did it a number. So we're going to try using the Milwaukee. Of course, I can never forget this tool. It's my favorite. And never mind, it's not my favorite. I mean, now it's my favorite because you can still ratchet it, but. You win some, you lose some. So, that's what the, the nut looks like. It's obviously not a castle nut, but we think that the next one will be. Let's check it out. So, after this, we're going to force this out by pushing it up. So, originally, my dad would do something like knocking it from the bottom in order to loosen it, but because this is an old car, that's probably not a good idea because it's probably gonna break. Let me correct myself. What he, what I meant to say, or what he corrected me after I said it was, instead of hitting it from the bottom of the nut, I mean the bolt, he meant he means that we should hit it from the the, the knuckle, and that vibration will free up the um, the piece that's attached to it. It's not it's not coming to me, but anyway, that piece attached to it will be able to be freed up by the vibration. So instead of knocking it from the bottom, we're gonna use a special tool right here all right so by the way that part's called the tie rod i knew it was going to come to me but of course it's called the tie rod because this is the tie rod bolt that the, the tie rod bolt that we're taking out i know some mechanics might be saying that come on just get over it with it but the point of this video is not just for me to fix my brother's car but also my dad to teach me how to use these tools so the part that we have here or the tool that we have here is called the tie rod and pitman arm puller what we're now focusing on is the tie rod puller part and in order to use this tool right here, you can see that it has this sort of vice-like um, screw and it has these uh, C-shaped claws. So basically what this do is, does is it fits under the contact point of the tie rod and the bolt. And then you want to take this um, screw here and position it under. We're going to directly under and then we're going to tighten it onto that bolt. Essentially what should happen is as we spin this uh, screw, it should move upwards and then it should push this out. So let's do it. All right, so here's the demonstration. 
Oh yeah, by the way, I, I forgot to mention, this has a socket under it. Or maybe I did mention it, actually. <laughs> so, if you move it timer clock, clockwise, then you'll see that the screw moves up and it pushes this screw right here. It's very important that we have it centered so that it keeps pushing that screw and not pushing off. So we're switching to position because if you can see, it was actually pushing the rubber and we didn't want to break that rubber. It's probably going to be brittle. So now that we have a change of position, we should be able to push it out. Oh, there we go. Look at that. The tie rod is now out and with the rubber intact too. Good job. I'm proud of this tool. And I think it was like $15 uh, at Harbor Freight Tools, so pretty good worth. Yeah, I say it's a pretty good worth because if we broke that rubber, we'd also have to replace it. And I know we don't want to charge my brother Oscar too much. So the fact that we had this was a godsend. All right, so the next step is to take out the bottom ball joint bolt. And I say bottom ball joint because but this car only has one ball joint, but I guess some cars have a bottom and an upper ball joint. So we're just going to call it the bottom ball joint. In order to take that out, we have to take out this pin. And it's around, it's on this um, castle nut. Where'd my example go? It's on this castle nut. So basically, it's it's inter the pin goes one arm in here and then one arm is bent around. So in order to take that out, we're not going to use a needle nose. We're actually going to take any pry tool or any thing that we can use as a lever and we're going to use that as a fulcrum to pull it out all right you guys didn't see it off camera but this took me like 15 minutes to understand how to take this out <laughs> i'm very very bad at understanding these things but anyway this is what i mean essentially the pen went in like this so all you have to do is you have to find out some way in order to stretch this this arm outwards or you can turn it over like this and then pull it out there we go finally all right so now in order to take out this nut obviously uh a socket is not gonna fit so like you'll see yeah i can't get in that so the only way to do it with a socket would be to take out the entire knuckle and do it that way. But instead, we're going to do it the smart way using some other tools. So we have a flat wrench right here. Uh, and we're just going to fix it on. And if you can't already pull it out by hand, then just take a hammer and knock it in. I find that using the part just below the head is the easiest for it to work, but you can do it your own way but eventually you should want to you should get it to a point where you can loosen it by hand all right so now we got the castle nut out and for comparison this is what it looks like and now we're going to take out the ball joint so the, our first attempt is going to be to try to knock it out using vibration and if that doesn't work then we're going to take out the entire knuckle Move this aside so that we are able to use the puller or the, the yeah, the tie rod puller. Alright, so we didn't think that was going to work, so now we're going to try taking out the entire knuckle. So in order to get these bolts out, you'll see that they don't come out by hand, so we're just going to hit them with a hammer. First, I'm going to hit them just by themselves to get it started. Wait, hold on. And on the bottom, I might need to use a smaller one. And then after that, I'm going to use an extension to reach it. Hey, that's pretty cool. So those are what the bolts look like. All right, so now we have it straightened and now we're gonna take out the tie rod. 
And now we're going to angle this downwards. I might have to knock it out a bit, but now we're going to move it to the side. Let's see, what's the best way to do this? All right, so I, what I didn't realize is that you can actually take out this part right here. All I have to do is just push it out by hand. And if you can't do that, then either push this knuckle down further or knock it out using your extension rod, or using an extension. But as you can see, we now have this part out of the way. So we should be able to use the tie rod puller. All right, so we didn't realize this and we hope that you're not doing this as we're going along. Hopefully you're watching this in advance, but we have to take out the spit sensor right here or the ABS sensor. In order to do that, we just need to take out this bolt right here. Take a 10 millimeter, put it on, then take my Milwaukee, but I think I might need an extension. Or do I? No, I don't. All right, so I had a bit of trouble actually getting it on. But once we do, you'll see that we're able to take it out by hand. And that's, that's how tiny the bolt is. In comparison to everything else, it's actually pretty underwhelming. But now, we should be able to unhook this. We're back, it's been around 15 minutes, and we've had a lot of trouble with taking out the spit sensor. The reason why is because, first off, it was hard to get out, but after we got it out, or while we were getting it out, we actually broke it. So you can see that we put some super glue and baking soda on it, so it should hold up. But the reason that we can't replace this with the new part, or rather the part that we have for replacement, because I, as you can see here, there's really no way to attach this old wire. We have to cut this in order to attach it, so we don't want to do that. So we're just going to super glue it and deal with it at least. If you didn't see already, we already took out the knuckle. So what we're going to do now is we're going to put the bowl joint back up. We're going to put some grease on it. Then we're going to install whew, this replacement knuckle. So we should be golden. All right, so now we're going to install everything back in. So first off, we're going to grease up the ball joint. Just take like a ton of grease and then, sorry, it's getting a bit dark and we do apologize for any inconveniences that might arise, but just stuff that in there oh. and then get that all around there in that rubber. All right. So you guys know the drill installation is the reverse of removal it is removal, but in reverse. So what we're going to do is we're going to take the bolt. No. We're going to take the bolt for the ball joint, we're going to put it back in, and then we're going to take the knuckle, and we're going to put it back on. Now, recognize which orientation it should be in. Okay, that was not good. Obviously, these four screws should be facing outwards, so we're going to lift it up and sit it on there. And then the next thing we're going to do is get the crown, the castle nut. All right, so by hand, first we're going to screw it on. This is gonna be a bit tricky. I'm not even sure if you guys can see this. All right, so after we put in the nut in order to secure the bolt, what we're gonna do is we're actually gonna take out that nut so that we can find out where the position for the uh, pin holes are. So we already have one here, but the other one should be around 60 degrees from it which is right. So now I'm going to take this out and using our new tool that my dad bought for my siblings, a digital, uh, the Quinn digital um, torque wrench, we're going to torque the bolt to 43 foot pounds. First I'm going to do it by hand and then we're going to torque it. And then after that, you can you should be able to twist it around for the pinholes. So if you can't get to it, just spin the knuckle around and turn on the thing. 43 foot pounds, okay. This is gonna be a bit hard to do. 39 foot pounds. Okay, 43. Now let's check if the pins are gonna fit. So 
Let's take this one. Okay, that's a good sign. If one of the pins fit, that means the other one should. So if we twist it in, wait no, you have to push, you have to push it further. If we push it in and twist it down, Okay, fulcrum. This is a terrible fulcrum. All right, so we finally got the pin in. You can see right here. And this pin also secures the bolt, so don't worry about... I mean, you should torque it specifically, but this also holds it in. The next step is to put the axle back in. So, by the way, this should function like a ball joint. All right. We're going to nail it back in. Get in that hole. Don't mean that. We're going to slide it in. I'm not sure if we have to slide it in all the way because we might need to finagle some other parts into it. And then finagle it back into here. All right, so it seems like the easier step is to take it out of the tie rod and try to put it into here, which Oh, there we go. And then we might need to knock it in a bit just so that we can get the bolts on. Where's the bolts? First, we're going to do the top one because the bottom one should fall into place anyway. Actually, we can get the bottom one in. We're back after a few minutes. We had a, a bit of difficulty trying to get this in so that the, um, the knuckle spindle is actually facing outwards. So now that this bolt is out, we're going to put the top two bolts that connected to a strut back in. All right, excuse, excuse me, I think I said um, knuckle spindle instead of the axle. What we're dealing with is this axle right here, the CV axle. We couldn't get it through, but eventually we were able to fit it in. Right, sorry, I, I'm going to block it away. All right, so we finally got the these two bolts in. It would have been easier if we loosened the tower bolts on the top, but it's all right. So now we're going to put the spit sensor back in, and that is simply just pushing it in. And then we're going to take our screw and just snug fit it. First, I'm going to do it by hand. And then I'm going to twist it by hand, actually. Because I think this one can just do by with a snug fit. So we got the spit sensor in. Hopefully it holds up. I'm, I'm, I'm pretty sure that vibration is not going to break this, but hopefully it doesn't. Um, and it, it should be kept in by itself. But after that, we're going to secure it to these, these holders, I guess. And then down here, it goes... Oh, this one's a clip. Okay. That's smart. I don't know why they didn't do it for this one up here. There we go. After that, we're going to put the tie rod in. And then we're going to take the bolt. I mean, the nut. It's this one right here. And then we're going to put it in. The torque for this nut here is 40 foot-pounds. We have to get it down all the way. All right. The torque for this is 40 foot pounds. So, we're gonna turn this on. We're going to. What the? So fast. Yay. Oh! Hey. Alright, so as you can see, we have the torque at 40 foot pounds. Alright, so tightening it should be this way. I 
I can't see the actual gauge. Okay, it's torqued to 40, so we should be good. This one, do you think it's good? The next step is to put the pin in. Now for this step, we actually didn't have to um, find out where the position of the pin is because the hole is actually on the threading, on the uh, bolt. So we just put that in there. We're gonna put it in from this, this loop here should be facing towards the CV axle like it was when you took it out. So it should look like this. All right, so now what we want to do is you want to take a plier and then just unscrew it. We're going to put this one facing down. And then this one facing up. Or you can do it by hand if you want to. There we go. All right, so now let's talk about the axle nut right here. So when we torque it, it's actually after we put on all the brakes. So we're not going to torque it yet, but we're going to tighten it as much as we can right now before we actually torque it. The torque for this is 181 foot-pounds, but as you saw from the struggle that we had with taking it out, the, the torque is probably going to get to like a thousand foot-pounds with the rust. So like, I wouldn't worry about that. We just need to make sure it's secure. Three. Okay. All right, so we're on the other side of the car and looking at the nut, you can see that it's actually, uh, uh, looking at the bolt, you can see that it's protruding out about one millimeter. So that means on the other side of the car that we should tighten it just enough so that the same thing occurs. So you can see here that right now it's flush, but we just want just one more millimeter. So let's keep going. Make sure it's at the right angle. So now we're at a point where we have to torque the axle nut. Now talking about that, we can see that when we actually tie the torque it to 180 pounds, that just spins. So we can't torque it right now. We have to torque it after we put on the brake and we knock it in. We have to not make sure that we knock it in because remember when we were taking it out, it was knocked so that it didn't rotate. So just remember after you put on all the brakes to knock it back in. All right, so obviously don't forget to put these nuts in. We actually forgot it last night, but we noticed that it was vibrating when we knocked this. And this is the reason why. These are, I think the torque circuit for this is 80 foot pounds. So keep that in mind. And then same for this. So I don't think I can do it any further by hand. Oh, and the ratchet will probably make it faster. So this is 80 foot pounds. So that means we're gonna have to pull up. All right, so it's easier to knock the bolt in or the rim around the bolt in when the, when the wheel's on or the tire's on. So, well, you can already see that I already knocked it in. So the final step here is to just torque the lug nuts of your tire. So, oh yeah, also check out my video on how to take out the uh, brake, the rotor, you know, all that good stuff and replace it and I'll see you there. But for now, I'm Ima and I just showed you how to remove and replace the knuckle spindle, well, the knuckle entirety from a 2010 Honda Insight. Whew. It's nighttime as you can see, we started at 2 p.m. and right now it's 5 p.m. So that was a three hour job, but without the video, it should take you guys around one, two hours, maybe around the two hours. But I think the most struggle that we had was with the axle nut, actually. I'm so angry about that. But I'm Ima and thanks for watching. Please like, comment, subscribe, and other videos on I Ima, especially the videos on the Honda Civic, the Honda Accord. My brother's not here anymore, but the Honda Accord, we actually dismantled that one. And I guess we're going to be doing some videos on the Honda Insight. So look forward to that and I'll see you there. So Mechanic Imon signing out. Peace.